they're real hillbillies. So. It looks real bare and gone, and it's dead, and there's nothing, nothing here but memories. Some of the things about the old days were good, and we've lost them. And I wished we had those back. Black Diamond Mines. It's a park, and it's a glimpse into history. Five mining towns have come and gone, yet there are people who haven't forgotten. Beneath this land, there are over 100 miles of coal mines. These mines yielded nearly 4 million tons of coal, valued at $20 million. This was California's largest coal mining operation. Johnny Buffalo was seven years old when his father took him into the mines. They got a little vein of coal, and they'd, they'd have to lay on the back or the stomach in order to dig it, and then they'd run it into a chute, and the chute, they'd run it into a car, and then they'd run the car to where the elevator was and bring it up in the, in the, in the car. That visit to the mines produced a strong reaction in a young boy. I was scared, yeah, I really was scared, because uh, it was dark in there, and they had this light, and the water running down, and everything wet, you know. Johnny now lives in nearby Pittsburgh, where he was a butcher for 66 years. I never did have any thought of being a miner because there was no opportunity. I wouldn't like it anyway because the conditions they had to work under and live, I, I wouldn't like it. I, I know that much. Because I made up my mind I was going to be a, a watch repairman, uh, something uh, finer. The mining activities lasted from the 1850s until 1902. It was a matter of a whole generation of new Americans desperately needing employment. You either had to work or else you don't eat. They uh, didn't like it too much, but they, they had no other uh, employment. So either that or, 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 or starve. There's no, there's no other work, only in the mining, that's all. They were a hardy bunch, relying on simple equipment and hand labor. Their newfound world was full of danger. My great-grandfather, he got killed in the mine in Stomachville. They set six uh, dynamite shots, and they miscounted. And uh, they went in when they miscounted. And a shot went off and killed them. That was in January 1891. Johnny Buffalo remembers a different world where people managed with what they had. People were poor up there because they only made maybe $2 a day or well, I don't think they made two and a half, about two dollars a day, and uh, of course, like uh, we had our own cattle and the chickens and eggs, and, and we raised the vegetables, so we weren't too bad off. We, we had plenty to eat, but no money. The people of Black Diamond. Their resourcefulness still amazes people today. They never complained, let me put it that way. Mama never complained, none that I can remember about the moneyed situation or anything like that. Frances Whipple. Her earliest memories take her back to the coal mining town of Summersville. The women are the ones that did all the work. I never saw my father wipe a dish as long as I can remember. <laughs> In those days, the women got together at each other's homes. But Frances remembers the men having more social outlets than the women. They'd eat and then they'd go out and play bochi and they'd play amura, you know, you know how that is, how they try to match numbers with their hands. The towns with their entertainments are gone, but once Summersville and Nortonville had their share of hotels, churches, and saloons. My father used to go over to my uncle in Nortonville. He had a saloon. He liked to go over there and gamble. One time he was over there gambling and it made Mama mad. She wanted him to come home, and he wouldn't do it. She went over there in her horse and buggy to get him and said, come on home, and he wouldn't do it. So she just took that table, and she just threw the whole thing over. And she, he said, do you know they could have killed you for doing that? She says, that, that meant money for all those men. She says, I don't care, and he grabbed him by the shoulder, and she dragged him out of there and put him in the cart and took him home. And she said, don't you ever go back there and gamble again. And he never did, believe me. <laughs> 
old furniture, quilts, memories that bridge past and present. Frances treasures a quilt made by her mother long ago. Each section of the pattern is a symbol of hard work and creativity. There is a strength in the past, in a mother's difficult journey from Italy to the slopes of Black Diamond. I never can remember about Mama complaining to Mom about money, wishing she had more. Never. She made it do, and that was it. Oh, she was a great cook and a great everything, really. Sewing, and that's how she got by. But uh, they all knew how to sew. Well, now, now, I'll take that back. I have an aunt that never knew how to sew. By the 1880s, coal production at Black Diamond Mines reached its peak. All during the mining period, Black Diamond fueled a growing industrial California. Coal was used in steamships connecting California's ports. It was used in steam locomotives traveling throughout the state. Yet the people of the mining towns were unaware of their role in history. We didn't know any different. You know what I mean? We were country kids. We were hill hillbillies. Amelia Ginocchio was born in Nortonville in 1892. Her school days were spent in a Victorian world full of flowers and friendship yet isolated from the growing cities nearby. We were never left alone. My father and mother never left us kids alone in the ranch. First time I was left alone, I was about 17, 18. Like many children, Amelia received a nickname. It was a boy's name, and it had to do with wanting some new clothes. There was two little girls came from San Francisco and uh, they had hoop and cough. They brought the girls up there and they used to put them in the mines. They said that the gas or the air from the mines would get rid of that hoop and cough. These little girls wore little overalls and they said to my mother, oh, Mrs. Janocchio, why do you keep that little girl in dresses? That's too much work. Why don't you get little pants like these, overalls? I wanted overalls like those girls. Well, I got the overalls and I got the name Jimmy. Childhood was a time of joy and playful teasing. It was also a time of tragedy when epidemics took many young lives. My brother-in-law used to tell the craziest yarns to us kids and scare us to throw the diggings out of us. I kept an eye on the, on the, uh, the cemetery. I just was, just, I was scared. The first time I'd ever seen a child, or anyone that was passed on, I guess I must have been about four years old. It was here in Somerset. It looked like a doll to me. You know, she was dressed in white and had the canopy over the hair all in white. And of course, I just kept staring at it. The cemetery is filled with memories. Buildings hold memories, too. Some men worked 12 hour shifts in the mines, then returned home to carry on their work as ranchers. We were ranchers as well as miners. So my dad rode his horse to the mines. And when he got there, he needed a place to keep the horse all day, so he built this cabin as a stable. Jack Lawher grew up on his family's ranch near Summersville and close to the present-day park entrance. When he returns to this land, he finds memories and a place for healing. As I came up this canyon, this place didn't change. You could view your own childhood once again. I mean, these are the same hills you ran up and down, and here it was, all just like you left it. During Jack's youth, his family related stories about life in Somersville. All during the month, the miners' wives went down to the company store and charged their groceries, their purchases. And at the end of the month, my dad said many times, he would turn over his paycheck to the Sam Brown, that was the storekeeper. There was no cash in any of the houses, not very, very little money. They'd withhold maybe $5 or something uh, for spending money and that would buy him beer at a nickel a glass at the bar. 
there was a companionship that we don't have now. Uh, no one was ever lonesome in those days. Now we're lonesome in the middle of cities, in the middle of towns, and so on. New sources of energy, petroleum, oil, and gasoline. By the late 1800s, coal production was slowing down. A complex technological world was on the horizon. As coal mining costs increased, competition from other coal mining areas intensified. An era was coming to an end, and Jack Lawher had few regrets. You had this beautiful serenity. On the other hand, it was very stark living. You baked everything that you ate or cooked it. You washed everything in a tub with an old-fashioned scrub board. Everybody likes the good old days as long as they can pick the good things out of the good old days. You see, if you have to take the, the good and the bad, then the good old days are not that great. Mm -hmm. 